Jigglypuff. Everyone's favorite fluffy pink dodgeball. It sings, it sleeps, it flies, it slaps, it's got a killer song on the Totally Pokemon album. We all know Jigglypuff's deal by this point, except for the small fact that one of these things isn't true. And it's not the song. That thing is a banger. Folks, I'm sorry to say it, but society is out to trick you at every turn, and you've been lied to your entire life. Ginger ale won't settle an upset stomach. Paul Revere never said the British are coming. We don't only use 10% of our brains. Not everybody needs eight glasses of water a day. You don't get a cramp if you go swimming after eating. You probably haven't swallowed any spiders in your sleep. Albert Einstein didn't fail out of math class. And Jigglypuff can't fly. This myth is so widespread, even my own dad, who is proud when he can correctly pick Squirtle out of a lineup, knows that Jigglypuff is that pink ball that can fly, but it's just not, and never has been, true. Sure, it's called the Balloon Pokemon, and in Super Smash Bros, it can puff itself up to fly like a balloon, kind of like Kirby, but in the games, there is no mention of it being able to fly anywhere in the Pokedex, it can't learn the move fly, or any flying type move for that matter. Any way you look at it, Jigglypuff cannot fly. But what if it could? If Jigglypuff were able to blow itself up like a balloon, could it actually float? And if so, how big would it need to get? Today, I dive into all that and more as I answer the question, can Jigglypuff actually fly? Richard, hit that intro. This video was suggested by my patrons, Mark and Sherry, and voted on by all my patrons. If you want to have a say in the types of videos that I make in the future, or you want to support this contact more directly, then check out the link in the description down below. If Jigglypuff were able to fly, how would it do it? Well, it's called the Balloon Pokemon, and in Super Smash Bros, it flies like Kirby by inflating and deflating itself, so it makes the most sense that it would fly like a balloon. Great problem solved. Now how the heck does a balloon fly? I think we all sort of intuitively know that if something is less dense than whatever fluid it's in, in this case, the air, then it will float, right? Oh, 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 oh my friend, just like how the sun isn't yellow, having a wet hair out in the cold won't make you sick, and peeing on a jellyfish sting doesn't do anything. Everything you thought you knew was a lie, and this too is not true. Well, well, no, actually, in most cases, that is pretty much exactly how it works, but it can get a little more complicated. You'll see. The jellyfish thing, though, that totally isn't true. Don't pee on a jellyfish sting. Whatever you do, it'll probably make things worse. Unless you're doing it as like a prank on your friend who's in pain, in which case, that's hilarious. Now, technically speaking, Jigglypuff is sort of an amorphous shape. It's round, but it's got ears, it's got feet. But for the sake of simplicity and not making this video way more tedious than it needs to be, let's consider Jigglypuff seen from above and assume that it's just a sphere. Because Jigglypuff is a thing with mass that exists on a planet, that means that it's constantly being affected by gravity, a downward facing force that is equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity. Jigglypuff has a mass of 5.5 kilograms or about 12 pounds. We'll leave G as it is for now. It'll save us a ton of effort of trying to calculate the gravity of a fictitious world if we just wait a minute or so. So for now, let's just take that G and hurl it out the nearest window. So we've got gravity all set in our diagram, but as you may have guessed, gravity is not the only force acting on Jigglypuff. Gravity always pushes an object downward, but there is also a buoyancy force, or in simpler terms, the float force, that pushes upward. 
The buoyancy force can be found by using this formula, I'll explain it in a second, and since these two forces are pointed directly at each other, we know that if gravity is stronger than the buoyancy force acting on something, it will sink. But if the buoyancy force is higher than gravity, then it will float. This funny looking P, it's actually the Greek symbol rho, and it stands for the density of the fluid that something's in. So in this case, it would be the density of air, which is around 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. Why they used this weird Greek letter for density instead of just a D, you ask? Well, there's actually a very simple explanation, and that's because physicists hate you. Next, it looks like our old pal G is back. Again, that's the acceleration due to gravity. Now, this step is very important. This time, you're gonna wanna take G and throw it out the nearest window to meet its friend. And lastly, V is the volume of fluid that is being displaced. In the case of a balloon floating in air, it's just the volume, it's just the whole, it's, it's all of it. I don't know why they needed to make it sound so complicated, I guess. I mean, if you're talking about a boat or something, then it's a little more... It doesn't matter. It's all of it. It's the volume. Since we're assuming Jigglypuff is a sphere, then its volume can be found using this formula, where H is Jigglypuff's height. We'll plug that in later. So, since we have two forces acting in the exact opposite directions, we can write out an equation like this to represent them. In order for Jigglypuff to be able to fly, then the buoyancy needs to be higher than the force of gravity. So we can just replace the equal sign with a less than sign and we're good to go. Now, you may have noticed that we still have some pesky G's sitting on both sides. Looks like they managed to clamber back in through the window or something. Richard, I thought you were supposed to lock that, but fear not. I've put it off for long enough and it's time to finally address them. We know from algebra that if you want to move something that's being multiplied from one side of an equation to the other, you simply divide both sides by that thing. Since you're doing it to both sides equally, it won't change the final result. So we divide both sides by G and we know that G divided by itself is one because anything divided by itself is one. So we can basically just cross it off over here and look at that. We have a G divided by itself on the other side too. That means that we can take both these G's and throw them out the window and stay out this time. Now we have a much simpler equation. On one side, we have the mass of the object and on the other, we have the density of the fluid multiplied by the volume of fluid that's being displaced. So basically all numbers and formulas to one side, this is just saying that if the mass of an object is less than the mass of the fluid that it displaces, then it will float. So in the case of Jigglypuff, if Jigglypuff is lighter than an equal amount of air in the shape of Jigglypuff, then it will float away like a balloon. Simple as that. Looking back at our equation, the only thing we haven't plugged in yet is H, the height. In games, Jigglypuff is listed as being half a meter tall or one foot eight inches. If we plug that in for H, then this side of the equation comes out to just 0.08 kilograms, which is far less than the 5.5 kilograms that Jigglypuff actually weighs. So in its regular form, no, Jigglypuff will not float as we expected. If Jigglypuff wants to achieve liftoff, then it's going to need to get bigger. A lot bigger. In things like Smash Bros, it seems like Jigglypuff can inhale air to inflate itself which would allow it to lower its density and fly away. That all checks out, except for one slight issue. If Jigglypuff inhales air in order to inflate, then it's increasing its volume for sure, but it's also increasing its mass. Air is very light, but it does have some mass to it. And if Jigglypuff inhales air to get bigger, then its mass will also increase by the amount of air that it inhaled and will always be the mass of the air it displaced plus a little bit of Jigglypuff still in there. So no matter how big it inflates, it will never float. In order to actually fly, it would need to increase its size without actually taking in any air, effectively leaving a vacuum chamber inside its own body. This is pretty far-fetched in real life, 
Well, this is also a world with fire-breathing lions and flying Venus flytraps, so you know what? Sure. Let's say that Jigglypuff has some sort of mechanism or muscles within its body that allow it to stretch out its own size without increasing its mass at all. If this is the case, then we simply need to find the height when the buoyancy side of the equation surpasses the mass side. To do that, we need to do some good old fashioned algebra, or seeing as this is the 21st century, just Google it. If we do that, then we find that in order to fly, Jigglypuff needs to be at the bare minimum larger than 2.05 meters tall or 6 foot 9. Basically, in order to fly, Jigglypuff needs to quadruple in height. A feat, to be sure, but honestly, not as much of a stretch as I thought. Get it? Get it? Stretch? Because it, because it stretch, it stretches. Like a blue, like it, it, it Inflate, it stretches. It... In order to fly, Jigglypuff will need to grow from the size of a kickball to probably much taller than you. But honestly, compared to a lot of the nonsense in the Pokedex, that sounds perfectly reasonable. Uh, granted, that is the minimum height required to just barely float. In order to gain substantial height, it would need to get larger than that, and then to come back down, it would simply need to reduce in size. This checks out surprisingly well with what we see in Smash Bros, where it puffs up to gain height and then shrinks back down to descend. That's exactly how that would work. But before we let this game off the hook, there's still one problem. During its final smash, Jigglypuff inflates to an enormous size. The size scaling in this game is all out of whack, so it's impossible to say exactly how big it is, but it's definitely a heck of a lot bigger than 6 foot 7. Surely at this size, Jigglypuff should rocket up into the sky and float away into space, right? Well, I wouldn't be so sure, because take a look at what happens when Jigglypuff finally deflates. Everyone around it gets blown away. In order for air to come out of Jigglypuff, it must have first gone in, meaning that in this case specifically, Jigglypuff did inhale air in order to grow, which is what allowed it to stay grounded. If that's the case, then it seems like Jigglypuff has an incredible amount of control over both its volume and its mass, independent of one another. And if it could do that, then it could put birds to shame with its amount of aerial control. My friends, it seems like this time, it was I who deceived you. The Great Wall of China is not visible from space, but just about every single major city on the planet is. No tea can remove toxins from your body, but your liver and kidneys can do that just fine, and if you're in halfway decent health, they probably don't need any help. The tryptophan in Turkey doesn't make you sleepy, but gorging yourself on food will, and Jigglypuff can, in fact, fly. It's just too bad that none of that science is canon to the games. In the games, it's, it's a ball. It's a, you, can, you can punt it. A massive thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon, including Alakazam, Ethan Perlano, and Sherry and Mark. If being a cool person gave you buoyancy, you all would be in space.